Hey everybody, this is World War Guy here today, and hopefully as you guys can tell, it is our monthly update. This one is for the month of November, and um, I didn't even realize it, but I actually got quite a few things, more than, than I thought at first. Uh, it's a bit of uh, everywhere, you know, post-war, pre-war, you know, American, German, Swedish, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, a lot of different things, more, you know, anyway, you know what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, let's just hop right into it. First item here, which is the biggest piece here, is a Korean War dated U.S. duffel bag. As you can see here, it is marked. Okay. There we go. With number U.S. 55213725. And then, so I'm trying to do this all alone. S C H uh, U and K. I'm not sure what that letter is supposed to be. Right now it looks more like shunk, but who knows what's what that letter is supposed to be. And then looks like Allen. Maybe. I'm not sure. There's that. This um I believe the US marking is on here. Yep, there we go. Faded, very faded US marking there. And then inside, I know it's Korean War because of the date. This will be a bit hard to see, it's a bit faded. Oh man. Okay. Might put this more in the sun. Alright. Hopefully that works now. Right there, 1951. Yeah, with the manufacturer and everything. So that's pretty nice. Pretty good condition. There's a few holes here and there. There's also a few repairs, as you can see, a repair right here. But not bad. I like it. It's like the third duffel bag I have now. And uh, let's move along with what I got with the um, duffel bag because I got it at an estate sale. So moving along, we'll keep that one for later. Actually. Right here, I have a uh, U.S. officer's belt, just, you know, for your trousers. No date on it. Here's the manufacturer. God dang, my shadow's just in the way, isn't it? Okay, let's hope that will focus. There we go. Oh, there we go. There's the manufacturer, and then inside you have the sizing. It focuses. Try and do this all alone. Sorry about that, guys. And then it looks like you have the name. Yep, same name it appears. Oops. I'll we'll have to do it in sections. Okay. It's a bit hard to see if I put it on the sun. There we go. There's the name. All right. So, yeah. No date. But assuming because it's the same name on the duffel bag, and the duffel bag is dated 1951, it's possible that this belt is also a 1950s dated, but then again, it could have been a World War II belt that was, you know, just reissued in the Korean War. That's pretty nice. And then with that, also came a tie. There's no markings on this tie whatsoever. Just your, an OD green tie. Uh, it came with the, with the, uh, the belt and the garrison cap. So I was like, whatever. Free uh, tie comes with it. And then, with the belt and tie came this garrison cap. It's a size seven. No date on it, surprisingly, but I'm assuming again it's a 1950s or 50s dated one. And then you can see here, there's orange and white trimming. And that would, uh, I looked online and that would tell me that it, this person was in the signal corps. So he was in charge, you know, with signals and stuff like that. Pretty good condition. A few uh, mouth holes here and there. There's one and then one in the very front. And uh, oddly enough, I'm a size seven one fourths 
This is a size 7 and it actually kind of fits. There's a nice uh, view of my face with the sun in it. There we go. So those items there, oh, I always forget the pants. And here we have Korean War era uh, US pants. You can tell most because of the flap here. The World War II ones didn't have, this is the back pocket. The World War II ones didn't have a flap to cover it. That's one way of knowing it. Of course the date, but this one doesn't have one, although it does have the sizing in it. So waist 31, length 31, which is a bit too wide for me, but the length is, uh, is it's okay, good length. I'm more of a 32, but there's that no dates, no name, but I'm assuming again, it's the same person who wore the, or who had the garrison cap, belt, duffel bag, and tie. The funny thing is, I got this at an estate sale, and I got there because I saw online that they were selling an Ike jacket with insignia and all that. And I was like, oh man, that looks great, I'm going to go check it out. Turns out the day before someone bought it, which is a bit too bad because assuming this belonged to the same vet, the Ike jacket, he kind of just separated the tunic with the pants and everything else, which is too bad, you know, it would have been nice to keep it grouped together for, you know, historical sake. But what can you do? All right, so moving along, let's move on. Let's move this here. Oh, this right here. Actually, let's just go with the tunic. This tunic right here is a Swedish M58 jacket. You guys can see that there. I'm not behind the camera, so I'm just gonna hope for the best. And here's the back side. So it's a M58 uh, Swedish jacket, and then inside you have the date and the sizing. 1960. Oh no, yes, 1960. Wow, very bizarre looking six. Pretty sure it's. I don't know. Give me, give me your guys' opinion. When I first saw it, I thought it was a six. But yeah, give me your opinion on that. I could easily see it being an eight as well. But then you also have the sizing right here at 98 long uh that roughly translate to about a 40 long chest wise but nevertheless this is a really nice jacket i got this off of mike's militario and i bought this because it looks cool and it's a great winter coat this thing keeps you very very warm when it's cold out trust me it has uh four pockets in, uh external pockets and then one internal pocket which is very nice the collar, when you pop it up, keeps your neck super warm. And then when I bought it, he tossed this in for free. Which is a uh, Swedish side cap that would go with the tunic. The funny thing is, um, he didn't, you know, he didn't know my, my hat size or whatever. So he just tossed in, I'm assuming, whichever one he grabbed first. Which happens to be a size 55. So, very, very small for me. It fits my brother, who's 7. But you know, that's not too bad there, as you can see. No, but you know, it's still nice because it's the whole like historical fact, you know, as a collector, it's not bad. I'm not gonna complain about it. It was nice for him to include it anyways. All right, moving along. This right here is Hitler's comb. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, at the front they had a Black Friday sale and they had a few original aluminum combs for like $15 instead of 20 It's kind of expensive, but I was like, I've always wanted an aluminum comb and this is a period correct, which is nice. Simple comb, no markings on it, sadly. But uh, yeah, I tried it out. It actually works really well. In my opinion, better than my plastic comb. But yeah, nothing much, much on that. And then right here, it's pretty neat. I got this today, uh, November 30th. It's a uh, US M1 Grand bayonet. This one I believe is the late war type because of the black Bakelite grips. God dang it. There we go. Uh, the blade's kind of rusted. Sorry, if you guys can't see that. There we go. Kind of rusted. Got a big rust, rust spot right under my thumb. 
And then we have the markings right here. Flaming bomb right under and then AFH. No date on it, but uh, either it's a late World War II or Korean War bayonet. Uh, but either way, it's pretty nice. All I need now is this, uh, the sheath for it. And then you got a chip in the Bakelite there. But yeah, so I got that today. It wasn't too bad. And now for the last part, which can either be really cool or total bust. Right here is a, uh, a supposedly original 1939 postcard, propaganda postcard. As you can see here, we have Hitler all right there giving a, or receiving maybe some flowers or pastry, I don't know from a little boy and you have other kids in the background um, you know Sieg Heil and uh, looking at it I could be completely wrong so please correct me or forgive me but these might be um, Goebbels kids Goebbels was uh, you know in charge of all the propaganda in Germany I probably butchered his name might have been his kids because he did have quite a bit of kids but please correct me if I'm if I'm wrong and on the back you have uh, writing. I haven't taken the time to read it yet, or let alone translate it. Uh, kind of hard to even make out the letters. But yeah, uh, April 20th, 1939. Here on the stamp, you can barely see it right under my thumb. April 20th, 1939. And the reason why I said this could be really cool or a total bust is because paper stuff is so easy to to fake. You just get a uh, piece of paper like a cardboard paper something you get a print on it you can write some stuff this is very easy to reproduce so I'm not sure if it's original I know this guy in Leavenworth I've talked about him a lot next time I go up there I'll try to bring this with me hopefully he can let me know if it's original or not hoping it is original I spent about $20 on it but yeah if you guys can tell right off the bat if it's original or not, here's this Hitler's photo. Uh, please let me know. But if this is original, this is cool. It's like the second piece of uh, paper material that I have from the war. So yeah, that's pretty neat. If it's original, of course. Now, uh, so yeah, that concludes the video for the month of November. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a lot of like knickknacks and nothing really like special, I would say. But uh, I, I enjoyed it. I like it. It's nice to continue adding to the collection. And there's one piece. I'll leave a little like teaser. There's one piece that I bought about two days ago. And it arrives in about two days. So that's going to be for the December video. But uh, it's going to be very nice. And I'll just leave a little hint that it's a World War II US M United States Marine Corps item. I won't say what item, but uh, I'm pretty excited for it. So get ready to see that video. Alright, but besides that, you guys have a great day. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.